Welcome to this special meeting of the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. September 8, 2022, the meeting notice was posted according to the requirements of the Open Meeting Act. <laughs> meeting will come to order. Will you call the roll, please? Certainly. First Congressional District Commissioner Kevin Potter. Here. Second Congressional District Commissioner David Conway. Third Congressional District Commissioner Charles Ortega. Here. Fourth Congressional District Commissioner Lindy Ritz. Here. Fifth Congressional District Commissioner Blake Rainey. Here. At-Large Commissioner Jim Putnam. At-Large Commissioner Chairman Jerry Hunter. Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. The draft of the minutes of the August 10 meeting has been sent to you and a copy is in your meeting packet. Are there any corrections to the minutes as distributed? If there are no corrections, I will accept motions to approve the minutes as distributed. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? If not, please call the roll. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Chairman Hunter. Aye. Thank you. The motion passes. The next order of business is item four, introduction of new Aeronautics Commission staff. Director Ardis. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Hope everyone's doing well on this fine September Thursday. Getting back to uh, some of our old roots of having commission meetings on Thursday. Uh, it's been a while, but uh, we still remember how to do it. Uh, got a couple of new staff members uh, to introduce to you. Um, Jace Torres, our new aviation program manager, started at the end of July. Comes to us from the OU aviation program, and uh, I know he's excited to get started working for the commission. He's been out. Uh, beating the pavement at the airport system across the great state of Oklahoma and uh, put a little uh, little sweat sweat equity into that pavement because I know it's been a little hot out there on a couple of those inspections. Uh, Clarissa Bailey, our procurement and finance specialist who uh, replaced Courtney Finney, who I know you all uh, remember, and she started in early August uh, and is doing some great things, comes to us from the uh, Oklahoma Water Resources Board. And then, of course, uh, we have Russell Taylor, uh, our fall 2022 intern, who's not here with us today but started September 6th also from the OU Aviation Program. And Jace or, or Clarissa, I don't know if you want to say anything or just give a wave, but uh, feel free. So there, there you go. There's our two new staff members. They're uh, very capable uh, individuals and are doing great things for the commission. Their uh, resumes uh, should be in your commission packet should you have an uh, interest to uh, check those out. So encourage you all to uh, stop by and introduce yourselves after the commission meeting and, and make them feel welcome to the Aeronautics Commission. Mr. Chairman, I'll stand for any questions or comments. Thank you, Grayson. Are there any questions or comments? If not, welcome to all the new staff. Uh, our next item is item five. Uh, the director's report, Director Artes, we are ready. All right, we will try and make this as expedient as possible, but we are going through O today. So, um, it's been busy the last couple of months, and of course we all know we had the uh, Education Commission meeting in August and didn't want to uh, belabor that any longer than we did, so uh, we'll cover between now and, and July. Um, starting off with, uh, just kind of take A, B, and C all together. Uh, that was the end of my July that uh, was my, you might call scheduling nightmare, but I uh, went to three different uh, events, the Farm Bar Air Show, uh, Washington, D.C. for the Contract Tower Association, and of course uh, Oshkosh for the Experimental Aircraft Association. All three were amazing events. Uh, Farnborough, of course, uh, international show where they alternate between Paris and, and Farnborough. Farnborough being in even, even years, Paris being in odd years. Um, <clears throat> had 11 different Oklahoma companies that were exhibiting at the Oklahoma booth uh, along with a dozen other uh, community and state partners at that particular event. Of course, Governor Stitt uh, headlined the the event and was able to go around and meet uh, a bunch of different companies. I think for the total week we had 82 meetings lined up that particular week with various companies and I think Governor Stitt put it uh, best when he said you know this is an opportunity to bring Oklahoma to the world but also an opportunity to bring the world back to Oklahoma and uh, everybody was excited. Everybody was excited about the opportunities afforded Oklahoma's aviation aerospace industry, uh, excited about the connections either what from traditional MRO to new AAM and UAS tech companies uh, looking to potentially come to Oklahoma for testing and manufacturing purposes. So a great opportunity there, uh, and of course we're able to use it as an opportunity to meet with our uh, members uh, over there. Um, 
whether it was the House of Parliament uh, or some of the other dignitaries within the British government um, and really show them here's how Oklahoma can help support British aviation aerospace uh, and be able to foster that relationship between Oklahoma and the United Kingdom. Contract Tower Program uh, in D.C. Uh, at the end of July, they always have their Contract Tower Annual Conference. Uh, allows us to have an opportunity to talk about Contract Towers. As you all know, we have six Contract Towers in the FAA Contract Tower Program, so six of our ten towers. There's also a tower that is operated by the same contractor but paid for at the DOD budget, so technically seven towers operated by contractors here uh, in Oklahoma which is the lion's share, the only three FAA staff towers. I also had this opportunity to meet with our congressional delegation um, and just wanted to uh, say thank you to Congressman Mullins, Caleb Cochran, uh, who's uh, sitting here with us today on the, the commission meeting, uh, met with the, the congressman's office there as well as the, the rest of our six members of the delegation and got to have a good discussion as we go into the FAA reauthorization debate, which is going to get started in earnest uh, in 2023. And then follow that on with Oshkosh and the Experimental Aircraft Association. Uh, really great uh, event there. Um, this was in Hoff's last Oshkosh as a sitting U.S. Senator. Of course, not his last Oshkosh. He uh, reemphasized that multiple times throughout the, uh, the course of time that he was there. He does plan to come back to Oshkosh and just enjoy aviation uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as a normal person. Uh, we also had a, a late arrival uh, in Governor Stitt. Governor Stitt came to see uh, what Oshkosh was all about. Uh, it was his first time uh, as, as the governor. He'd been a couple times prior to that just as an aviation enthusiast. But the uh, governor was there. Of course, we all had the, uh, the headline event on Saturday uh, at lunch where EA's Jack Pelton, uh, Senator Inhofe, and, and of course Governor Stitt all spoke uh, there, which was a tent of about 200 people um, and, and really great opportunities. And they were all excited to hear about the things that Aeronautics, aviation, aerospace uh, was happening throughout the state. We had several, several good meetings throughout that week. Uh, and Sandra, I don't know if we had any pictures um, about that. Nope. Um, so great, great opportunity there um, to showcase Oklahoma to the Oshkosh crew, and and really great opportunity to have Inhofe have his last Oshkosh as a sitting U.S. senator. Follow that on with a congressional staffers briefing on August the 4th. Uh, every year we and FAA try and get together to brief the Oklahoma congressional delegation uh, and kind of explain our roles and explain how the AIP program works to invest in various programs and projects throughout the state and just kind of talk about what all is happening. Of course, Michelle Coppage, the director of the Monroney Center, Rob Lowe, our regional director from the Southwest region, uh, headlined the event and had an opportunity to talk about how Oklahoma Aeronautics plays into the FAA project program and how our five-year airport construction program works uh, and how just the commission uh, works in general. And, and I know given some of the new staff uh, that our congressional delegation has both at the DC level and, and at the field level, it was good to make those connections and, and have a discussion. Of course, the, the hot topic was the Tulsa International Airport Air Traffic Control Tower, which is first and foremost on everybody's minds is the, the top infrastructure need for the state of Oklahoma. We followed that on with uh, Tinker and the Primes, uh, August 9th, the 11th. Of course, we kicked that off with the first ever Women in Aeronautics event. And I think Sandra would agree with me that uh, it was a pretty good event. Uh, had an opportunity to induce two, introduce two great speakers uh, that were at Tinker Air Force Base that were women supporting aerospace and defense. Um, really great opportunity there. And I think they are looking to grow that event in the future. Uh, and, and I hope that we will have the opportunity to partner with them to make that another success like Women in Aviation Aerospace Day has been for us in the fall. August 9th, the uh, University of Oklahoma invited me down for their Aviation Transportation Committee meeting uh, and spoke to them about all things aviation aerospace. Uh, they meet, uh, I think it's every first, two, second Tuesday of the month uh, in the upstairs classroom uh, of the Max Westheimer Airport. If anybody's ever interested in going, you're welcome to attend. Uh, and a great opportunity to talk about the, the Norman uh, activities course with the Oklahoma Aviation Academy and how they're working that uh, high school specific full immersion program. Pretty great opportunity given all the things that I was able to talk about in terms of where aviation aerospace is going and of course the number one need that we have in Oklahoma and across the country being our workforce challenges and being able to do workforce development. 
Rosie the Riveter, uh, Memorial Garden unveiling August 12th. Uh, the Air and Space Forces Association, AFA, uh, had been working for several months, and I think uh, maybe even a couple of years, on having a dedication to the Rosie the Riveters of the world and how they were able to help us win and get through World War II and how that legacy has been able to be continued forward at Tinker Air Force Base and, and other places around the country. Uh, but a great uh, memorial garden there at the uh, Midwest City Welcome Center uh, on I-40. If you all have a chance to, to go stop by Tinker Air Force Base, maybe look at some of the static displays and right across the highway from the static displays is that memorial garden. Uh, and thank you to the AFA, AFA for being willing to do that. And of course, uh, thank you to Sandra Shelton and Michelle who uh, do some good work for the AFA on the side for getting that great organization for the state of Oklahoma moving in the right direction, the Garrity chapter of, of AFA. And I know if, if Commissioner Jim Putnam was here today, he was uh, excited about that as well. Followed that on with the Air Force Sustainment Center change of command. Uh, had a, uh, our three-star, uh, which is the AFSC, Air Force Sustainment Center uh, leader, uh, changed out. Uh, we now have uh, General Stacy Hawkins, uh, who's been a long, long lineage of uh, material command uh, maintenance, logistics, uh, and I think is going to be a great commander for AFSC uh, moving forward. Uh, of course, we wish uh, the previous general uh, well, uh, going to the Pentagon and going to do some great work and continue working uh, for that moving forward. So got to attend the uh, change of command ceremony, which is always a great opportunity to go to Tinker Air Force Base and see the amazing things happening inside Building 3001. Uh, Boeing Company, uh, some of you all may know uh, Todd Polly uh, from the Boeing Company. Of course, Todd Polly, son of Oklahoma, uh, done a lot of work uh, for all kinds of things in Oklahoma, uh, whether aviation, aerospace, politics, campaigns, you name it. Uh, now with the Boeing Company, invited me to speak at the uh, National Governors Association uh, workforce meeting. They were touring around Oklahoma, uh, and I had the opportunity while they were going to go tour Tinker Air Force Base or not Tinker, uh, Boeing's plant and the uh, B-52 High Bay right across from Tinker Air Force Base had to go opportunity to talk to all the states and their workforce uh, development offices about here how Oklahoma is leading the charge with aviation aerospace workforce development from our AOPA program to the aviation education grant program and all the great things that Paul Akiti is doing for us uh, on that front. So really, uh, really great conversation there to kind of showcase what Oklahoma is doing and I know we're still having some conversations with other states on how they can take some of the ideas for what Oklahoma is doing and implement it back in their home states. And we know, we all know, the the best form of flattery out there is when someone tries to to copy what you're what you're doing in your home state. So that made us made us feel pretty good. Um, also had the opportunity uh, that following day on August 17th to attend uh, Governor Stitt, Governor Hutchinson had a signing ceremony to uh, cement our two states together uh, in terms of being able to be strategic partners on all things advanced air mobility in unmanned aircraft systems. Um, that was a, a great MOU signing there at OSU Tulsa. Um, of course, we know the Northeast Oklahoma corridor and the Northwest Arkansas corridor uh, play very well together. Uh, there's a lot of energy surrounding that, both from an industrial and commercial standpoint, from a highway standpoint, just from a tourism standpoint. And of course, we have the opportunity now to bring that into the new technology sector of aviation aerospace with the MOU and being able to work together between Arkansas and Oklahoma. And of course, uh, if you didn't see last Friday, a great announcement by the Northeast Tulsa uh, team uh, with their Build Back Better grant announcement that they're able to get specifically focused on AAM development in the Northeast Corridor uh, of Oklahoma. University of Oklahoma about three years ago stood up a uh, master's program, executive master's program for aerospace and defense. Uh, we were working with them for several years to stand that up and of course now that it has been stood up they're on their third co cohort of students going through that program and every year I get the opportunity to go speak to them and kind of give them the briefing of what aviation aerospace means to the state and of course these are students not just from Oklahoma but all across the country and even some international students as well and so it's great to share that story of what Oklahoma is doing, but then also great to hear what they may be experiencing back in their home states and what are some of the challenges they're able to overcome that we may be experiencing in Oklahoma. And so a good opportunity to go visit with them at the Delaware Resource Group 
uh, their campus where they have their the last two weeks of their program in person on the DRG campus and they go around to see some amazing stuff as to what Oklahoma has to offer. So uh, had had opportunity to speak to them and uh, also had a little opportunity to learn from them and some of the challenges, whether it was how South Carolina was able to recruit the uh, Boeing 787 plant or uh, some of the other economic development initiatives that their companies were able to benefit from from other states and, and take some of that back and learn a little bit about how Oklahoma might be able to improve our offerings moving forward. Oklahoma Strategic Military Planning Commission, uh, as, as you all well know, that's one of our close partner agencies uh, in the state of Oklahoma. I've worked with them for years on military training airspace legislation, the OMACAMP uh, project to map out all the state's military airspace in Oklahoma. Uh, and uh, their chairman has asked that we come participate in their monthly meetings uh, a little bit more frequently. They're very excited about the potential of, of course, AAM and UAS, especially with some of the things that uh, Fort Sill and the FISTA uh, and some of the counter UAS activities that they're trying to stand up down in southwest Oklahoma. And so we're going to go try and help them uh, navigate uh, and continue moving forward within that particular arena. So I had an opportunity to present for about 20 minutes at their commission meeting on August 18th. Uh, also, Oklahoma was able to welcome uh, Vice Admiral Jeff Trussler, uh, native of uh, Miami, Oklahoma, uh, back to uh, Oklahoma, ODIA, Oklahoma Defense Industries Association, uh, had a defense briefing uh, where he was able to speak and kind of give us that purview and perspective of, of the Navy uh, and DOD, and of course, we know we have the, the Navy Tacamo and the contingent out of Tinker Air Force Base and, and how, uh, how they play a role in the Navy Strategic Command. Uh, and how Oklahoma can best position itself moving forward for uh, supporting and continuing our support for the Navy at Tinker Air Force Base. September 1st, uh, Claire Moore uh, was able to build 10 T hangars over the last probably about 12 to 18 months, and they wanted me to come speak about aviation aerospace at the ribbon cutting ceremony. Just for clarification, this was not one of our projects. This was one of their projects that they did on their own. Uh, really glad to see it. They uh, rented those 10 tea hangers, I believe, in about 45 minutes, uh, they said. Uh, the, the demand was so strong that uh, even after raising their prices uh, fairly significantly, I think, from where they previously were, uh, they were able to get uh, everybody rented out. In fact, I, I'd heard a few people that were uh, on minute 50 and 55 uh, sending emails in to the airport manager and didn't get a hanger. Uh, they were a little disappointed because they didn't realize how quickly it was going to be going. So. Uh, but great, great things happening up there in Claremore, Oklahoma, uh, and they're continuing to see some of the success of uh, just aviation growth in general, the Tulsa metro area. And then yesterday, uh, we've, we've come to the end. Yesterday, I had the, the pleasure to speak to about, oh, 200, 250 people at the Tulsa Rotary Club, uh, just about aviation aerospace. Um, and uh, Jerry Barrientos, who's very involved in aviation aerospace up in the Tulsa area, um, invited me to come speak several months ago uh, and had that opportunity to share the aviation aerospace story with a lot of people that probably didn't know what aviation aerospace meant to the state of Oklahoma. And of course, we know that's one of our biggest challenges in general is just awareness of what aviation aerospace can mean to Oklahoma, what it means to the economy of the state of Oklahoma, and why are we putting all this effort and energy behind aviation aerospace uh, beyond just being able to beat our chest and say Oklahoma's a leader and we're doing really great things. This is helping diversify Oklahoma's economy, and I think uh, I think that message was heard loud and clear. Uh, and of course, I uh, issued them a uh, uh, an ask, uh, an ask for help and assistance, uh, being that you need to go help spread the word of aviation aerospace and go tell your school districts, go tell your students about the opportunities afforded them in this aviation aerospace career. Go talk to parents and have those parents talk to their kids about all the career opportunities that are available in aviation aerospace. And so. Uh, it's been a busy couple of months, uh, but busy is good. Uh, busy means uh, things are going well and, and people like what you're having to say. So uh, with that being said, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I'll stand for any questions. Thank you, Grayson. Do we have any questions or comments? If none, next on the agenda is item six, our legislative, congressional, and regulatory update. Sandra Shelton, please come forward. Good morning, commissioners. Um, on August 10th, the Aeronautics Commission met with Senator Paul Racino and Director Artes Alexis Higgins with the Tulsa International Airport and Jeff Mulder with Will Rogers World Airport for a ceremony in the Blue Room 
regarding commercial air service. We're really excited about this bill, and uh, we are hoping that the legislature uh, will soon maybe put a little money with that, and Director Artie's can speak to that later. But we are working on that now, and uh, we are really excited about getting more direct flights to Oklahoma's airports. So that was what that was about. And then uh, ceremony bills, ceremonial bill signing was held for Senate Bill 1147, which is an aviation coursework eligibility um, bill for core credit. And that was held at Will Rogers World Airport on August 19th, which is Aviation Day in Oklahoma, in tandem with the National Aviation Day uh, nationally. And um, so I want to talk just a little bit about that, and I'm going to go off script a little bit from my notes. Paula Keaty worked really hard on that, and so did, I want to say that Saxon Alton with the governor's office really worked hard with us. Senator Zach Taylor's office worked hard, and we had students from Deer Creek, Weatherford, and Fort Cobb Broxton, and then Lily Putnam came over from Mustang, and the students were there, and the governor shook every one of their hands. It was so meaningful, and we're standing there in the observation deck, and over uh, across the expanse is the airport, and there's planes coming and going. It was just a neat day for us. So that was really one of the first things that the Aeronautics Knox Commission has really done on Aviation Day uh, since we put that in statute six years ago. So it was really a, a cool day for us, and uh, Commissioner Rainey came that day, and um, we had lots of television uh, there, and there was a, a lot of stories ran on that as well. So that bill, and I don't, I'm sure Paula will talk about that, but that bill is really getting some traction, and uh, so we were excited to host that, and I would be happy to answer any questions about that. Uh, I will also say to Jeff Mulder in the airport there, they really helped us. They took those students um, after our bill signing on a tour of the airport, and they got to see baggage claim and baggage handling, which is the greatest thing ever to see at that airport. So it's, it's an incredible time to be in aviation to watch that. But the, the last thing that I wanted to address to commissioners is that we held um, an Emerging Transportation Technologies Interim Study with Representative Nicole Miller. And uh, so at the State Capitol, you know I've been out there a long time, 26 years. I've seen a lot of weird stuff, and I know that Representative Ortega, Commissioner Ortega, can tell you this. It used to be in the Capitol that whoever was in charge got to decorate the building. And so they, like the Lieutenant Governor's office, when Jerry Askins was in office, she, I, I saw her bathroom one time and it was pink tile. And I do have a point to this, to say this. Since they have redone the Capitol, there has been a renaissance of structure and infrastructure put in that building that will forever um, put a placeholder for Oklahomans future generations that there will no longer be people that just come into power and you know make changes to um, such a treasure. This UAS legislation, this, this interim study, is the same. The Aeronautics Commission is empowered uh, through statute to work on UAS items. And instead of all of these different silos and pe people with agendas coming together and saying, well, we want to do this, we want to do that, it's really important that the Aeronautics Commission is now vectoring this legislation and vectoring the UAS industry. And so we're so proud to be working with James Grimsley and Representative Nicole Miller. And uh, so the study uh, occurred and um, James Grimsley presented uh, as a director of the Choctaw Nation and talked about safe altitudes, current UAS trends, and the future of unmanned integration into the national airspace. And then um, they had a professor from UCO Law, uh, Mark Blitz, came and spoke about First Amendment and Fourth Amendment rights. And then uh, Matt Varney from the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics spoke about law enforcement and UAS law enforcement and what they're doing in that. And then Todd Pauly spoke on behalf of the Boeing Foundation and Director Artie's wrapped it up. And I had two lawmakers call me after this UAS study and told me that it was the most meaningful thing that they had seen in a long time regarding unmanned. And in the building that day, they were shooting some sort of uh, uh, video because a drone was whirling through the building while, while we were trying to conduct our study, and it was kind of loud, but it was kind of interesting that they were doing that on that day. So that to say, I'm very proud that the Aeronautics Commission uh, has a voice in UAS and unmanned, and I think that we will be, be building the framework that 50 years from now they're going to say, oh my gosh, the Aeronautics Commission, that little tiny engine did such amazing things back then. So I'm super proud of that. I'm happy to yield for any questions.
Thank you, Sandra. Do we? Thank you, Sandra. Do we have any questions or comments? If not, uh, next up is item seven, our financial report. Mr. Wadsworth, if you would, please. Chairman, commissioners. Starting out with the financial summary document, as of August 31st, the commission had an ending cash balance of just under 9.4 million, with encumbrances totaling a little over 6.6 .6 million. Outstanding reimbursements owed to the agency total about $822,000. Uh, the amount of remaining expenditures in the airport construction program that could be incurred this fiscal year total 6.8 million uh, provided those grants are approved this leaves us with an expected available cash balance after encumbrances and expected income of just under 575,000. and total year-to-date expenditures during the first two months of this fiscal year total uh, a little over 1.5 million dollars moving on to the revenue uh, total statutory revenue collected for the month of july was 666,796. and total collected for august is shown as 154,000 or 145,000 excuse me uh, i will note that is not complete uh tax commission has not posted the full revenue collections for august that should happen later today if it hasn't happened already this morning while we're here um, so that number will increase by a little bit uh, i'd estimate 20 to 30,000. Total statutory revenue collected through August of this fiscal year with what's reported was over 813, which compares to 598,000 last year. So we are up about 30% compared to the first two months of last fiscal year. And then finally, on the three-year average report, you'll see that revenue collected from the uh, this fiscal year from aircraft registration fees, excise tax, fuel tax, and the license plates is up about 21,000 more than what our three-year average is. So, so far through the first two months of this fiscal year, revenue is looking pretty good, and uh, we're off to a good start. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, sir. Um, do we have any questions or comments from our commissioners? If not, the next order of business is item eight, aerospace and aviation education program update. If rock star Paula Keedy would please fill Mr. us in. Commissioner, Mr. Chairman and commissioners, good morning. Uh, I'd like to report on several really positive things that have taken place in the last couple of months. First, the Superintendent Counselor Aviation, and it was called Expo. It really was a serious meeting. I'm very pleased about what happened at that conference in that we were able to invite about 85 uh, district superintendents and counselors to come to the Choctaw Nation headquarters. They hosted us. and. Um, talk to them seriously about, okay, now you've built this pathway, this four-year pathway of aviation. Where do these students go next? And let them understand what the opportunities are for post-secondary education in Oklahoma in aviation. We assume that they know, they do not know, that here's where you can go for air traffic control. Here's where you might go for this. Guide them so that they then, in turn, can guide their students to the appropriate post-secondary opportunities, be it uh, maintenance or pilot programs or whatever. We had a great day. We uh, partnered with Southeastern Aviation, so we spent half the day over at Southeastern, half the day at the Choctaw Nation. Uh, our staff <laughs> did a lot of work in putting all of this together. Doug Wood uh, talked to them about resources and drones that they might purchase. We visited with them about simulators, those kinds of things. So it was a very, very positive day. I will say that was all funded through our FAA grant, our 625 uh, grant. And so that turned out to be a, a very positive thing. And then on July 25th, Sandra Shelton and I went to the South Grand Lake Airport and met with not only their airport personnel, but the Ketchum Public School team. Um, there were about nine or 10 folks there. And what's exciting about that to me is that it wasn't just a school saying we're gonna try to stand up a program. It's the community, it's the airport, it's, there were realtors there, we wanna have a voice in this. And so what happens is a small school like Ketchum High School is able now to offer aviation because they're not going it alone. And so it, that was a very, very positive meeting. I've spent, uh, I did a really quick try to finish up the summer with as many school visits as I could, knowing that most schools can't just turn around and offer a new aviation course in July and try to make that fly. Uh, so I made a second trip to Tulsa Union. They're, very, they're working very hard on implementing that next fall. And so I'll go again to Tulsa Union, but I think that uh, 
I think they're very interested in, in starting an, an aerospace aviation program. I did visit with NOWADA Public Schools who said, yeah, we, I know it's July, but we can offer this in August. And so they put it together and they are now offering uh, aviation as we speak today. And uh, so I'm very pleased about that. I then made the long journey to Sayre. Uh, Sayre Public Schools actually didn't know anything about it. It was their city manager who said, okay, we're on, we're, we're gonna join this, we're doing this, let's get a team together. So I visited their new STEM building, I met with their city team and I met with their school team and they're looking very seriously at next fall, which will be awesome for us to be able to go that far west and start building some schools um, out that way. Day before yesterday, Director Ardees and I had uh, lunch and a meeting with President Webb at Rose State and Dean Stoddard of their engineering department. And they are working very hard uh, to really enhance their aerospace aviation offerings. And they're working, hopefully, waiting for some funding possibilities to actually stand up a lab that they would be able to open up to be at a homeschool consortium or be at uh, some feeder school, high schools, to come in and teach AOPA actually at Rose State which would benefit obviously our state, but obviously would benefit Rose State as well as they stayed there then to uh, follow up their education. Um, also in July, I did, I, I did speak uh, in two different breakout sessions at the Oklahoma conference, uh, summer conference for Department of Career Tech, and was able to speak about aviation and aerospace. Uh, had a lot of positive feedback there and a lot of schools interested, so everywhere we go, uh, more and more people are saying, we heard about this, we wanna know what's going on, how do we get on board? So that was a very positive meeting. There were 3,000 attendees from uh, career tech teachers from across Oklahoma. And finally, I will end with, with talking a little bit about the FAA grant in general. Uh, we submitted our second quarterly report uh, at the end of the month and as we put that together, Michelle and, and Chris put the financials together and submitted that, and I was asked to write the narratives that go with the report, and one of them is a summary of activities, and the other is what you feel like your accomplishments were. And as we put that together, I was able to say that we met with probably over 4,000 school administrators, counselors, and educators because of the opportunities of this FAA grant and being able to be at these conferences. Uh, I was able to say that we trained our teachers, that we met the 50, our goal of 50 or more schools and that we were able to train all of those teachers. Uh, so as we put all that together and we're able to say we're, we're ranked number one in the nation in the number of schools and to send that off to FAA made me very, very proud, very proud of this team who did a lot of work to make sure that this grant is implemented. So if you look in the rear view mirror at the first quarter uh, of, of accomplishments, uh, it was very positive and very, I thought it was uh, rewarding personally to be able to implement that. As we move forward in the last two quarters, right now we're working with all 57 schools. We're able to purchase them $2,000 worth of year one supplies with the FAA grant. So if your high school is teaching the AOPA curriculum, we were able to buy them what they need for their lab to teach those hands-on activities. Uh, as you probably know, many times it was the classroom teacher himself or herself running out there to buy the, the stuff they needed for the next day's lab or whatever. And so we were able to, to do that with the FAA funds. The other two large events that are be coming down the pike in the last two quarters of implementation, one will be a two-day drone UAS event at Oklahoma State University where our 57 teachers will be to come and listen to experts uh, on UAS and drone, using drones in school in particular. And then the final event, and Sandra and Michelle and I worked on this last week a little, will be in April, and that will be Oklahoma Student Pilot Day. And so our 57 schools will be able to come to Tulsa, and we're working with a, at a hangar and with the Tulsa Air and Space Museum to uh, put that uh, together on April 6th. Isn't that right, Sandra? So we have two big events left for grant implementation, finish up buying the supplies, and then I'll close by saying each of our five aviation high schools of excellence will also offer two STEM days. So all of the schools will get to go to some STEM, aviation STEM days at our five 
locations in the region as they right now are mentoring those schools. So I spoke to two different schools uh, on the way up here this morning saying we've got our day planned, we're gonna invite Pahuska, we're gonna invite whomever. And so they're working hard to get that message across. Um, so we've had a lot of positive work and, and I'm moving forward now because now the window opens for next year. You know, how do we get those schools on board for August of 2023? So put my little car on the road and off we'll go and we'll visit with more superintendents. Be glad to answer any questions that, that you might have. Thank you, Paul. What does it cost, just out of curiosity, for a school district to implement the AOPA program for a year? If all they're doing is directly teaching the curriculum, in year one, it it probably doesn't cost $1,200, $1,500, okay? But that's obviously without any simulators, uh, without any heavy equipment. You're just talking about, so if they're building a Mars rover, the stuff, the hands-on stuff they need to build that activity. So it's really not that much. If you begin to stand up a lab, because in year two and three, it is recommended that those schools have at least a couple of simulators if possible that they could rotate students through as they're lo learning those ground sk skills. That obviously would be better. A lot of our five schools of excellence now are trying to find other grant opportunities to actually keep on adding and building to their lab. I'd say the hands-on for those four years would never exceed $1,500 to $2,000 a year, but that's without the equipment for a, a lab itself. And most of these schools are buying simulators that cost about $5,000. They're desktop, they have pedals. Uh, I can help lead any schools on what most of the schools have purchased. Uh, and, and anybody that needs direction in that, I can, I can help with that. The FAA provides grant money, but that is small, as I understand it, correct? Like $2,500 or $2,000, the acquisition of hardware for labs? The FAA, I, I don't. I wasn't aware that they require okay. uh, that they offer right. grant. Six twenty-five. Uh, oh, oh okay. no, yeah. The six twenty-five yes. is is specifically for that first year of fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars supplies. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's what we've been able to. But do the overall that. grant was much larger. Yeah, it was a half a million. Right. Yeah. Are private schools? Yes. Any any school, home schools, private schools. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. First of all, kudos to you guys. I know at the time when you were part of writing the grant and we had no idea what could happen, I think it would say be careful what you ask for because <laughs> when it came, we had a half a million dollars. But if I were reviewing what you have sent in, I can't imagine that there's any other entity that's going to come forward that has a success. And I'm not just saying it because I'm sitting here but I think FAA would have to be extremely proud of what we've done with their money, and hopefully they'll see about how that continues. The other thing as far as talking points, I know um, we've been talking about uh, how many schools. You mentioned two or three that are new to the program. What's the total number right now that are actually in the program? I think we're right at 57. I, ha I have 12 in the queue uh, right now to go visit and follow up. Uh, those were ones that waited too late in the game to try to get it ready for this fall. So I'm, I'm we'll meeting uh, Muskogee in a couple of weeks. I'm going to Stillwater. Um, so we've got lots of things going that um, I think will add. My goal, I told somebody the other day, was at least for next year to try to get to 75 if we could, and I think we can do that. Right now, people are calling me. I'm not calling them and that's a whole new uh, ball game uh, when they are they want to know what's going on so great work thank you so much absolutely you know if the AOPA teacher summit is going to be here in Oklahoma City next year we um, met with them this week okay. uh, and um, they're very positive about making that happen hopefully yeah. again at OU at Norman, yeah. uh, they were real pleased with the venue and with the whole process obviously we won't have our 625 grant money. This year we were able to pay their lodging, right. their per diem, and all of those things. But uh, I still think the, it was such a positive experience. Those schools, uh, I think we can get a large number of teachers here for training again. Okay. Anybody else? 
Anybody else have anything? Thank you so much. Thank you, Paula. Mm -hmm. Next up on our agenda is item nine, Aviation and Aerospace Day update. Sandra Shelton, please give us your report. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, hold on, I'm thinking, gathering my thoughts on what I want to say about this. So a discovery flight was held for Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell at Wiley Post Airport on Aviation and Aerospace Day, which is August 19th in Oklahoma. And it's so refreshing to be um, in a position for our agency and our, our director that when the Lieutenant Governor wants to take a flight, they call your cell phone and say, hey, Lieutenant Governor Pinnell wants to take a flight, and you have the opportunity to say, I know a guy. So our aviation community and the flight schools in Oklahoma are amazing. I know that we've uh, talked with Oklahoma Aviation out at Wiley Post, and I, I love Wiley Post Airport. That's where I train. And uh, But there are 108 outstanding airports, and most all of them know a guy or know how to find, you know, Mitch at Chickasha Wings or all these people, they just want to make pilots. And so we were very proud to have Lieutenant Governor Pinnell uh, with us. So this is, on, on this side, is Antonin's daughter. And Antonin is a Mustang Aviation High School student. And Antonin got his pilot's license in 10th grade. He is going to be working on his commercial rating. Uh, and so Antonin and Lieutenant Governor Pinnell, and that's Scott Dorsey with Route 66 Flight School. And so they took a, a GA flight, and at first, uh, Pinnell said that he couldn't go because he had some other things to do, and then he thought, no, I'm getting in the plane, and they took that flight. And it was covered uh, by a, a Channel 4, I think, covered that, so that was really great that that happened on Aviation Day. So this was actually two days before Aviation Day, and then they, they uh, ran the um, story then. But then uh, also here on the other side is Senator Chris Kidd, and this is at Duncan Halliburton Field. And uh, I really want to commend that airport for the work that they're doing. 5B Aviation is over there. And they took it upon themselves to have an Aviation Day celebration. And so uh, 5B Aviation paid for that. They had all the food there. And so I want to just give you some stats. Uh, so Richard Martin is their head flight instructor with 5B Aviation, and he said they had at least 15 students flying and about 20 to 30 aircraft and trainers working from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. And if you'll indulge me, uh, this is from the Duncan Banner, and this is what Senator Chris Kidd said. I'm confident in saying we would not have commercial air travel. We wouldn't be going to space. We wouldn't know what the jet stream is or a stratosphere. We wouldn't have a spacesuit, and the list goes on and on if it weren't for Oklahoma and Oklahomans. That's just the history. If you look what Oklahoma is doing now, we're leading the nation in aviation and aerospace and also in Department of Defense as far as our aerospace and defense sector. And of course, Duncan has played a huge role in the history and in the future. You look at the Billings and their company, which is 5B Aviation, it's extremely important to their company. Halliburton, I don't think, would be where it is today, even though it's not much in Duncan anymore if it weren't for aerospace and air travel and the things that were going on in Oklahoma during those pioneering days of aerospace. What, just 40 miles from here, it was a one-eyed sharecropper's son who patented the first spacesuit, discovered the jet stream and stratosphere. This part of Oklahoma is extremely important. In World War I, Oklahoma is the very first place airplanes were used. Right here at Fort Sill in World War I, it was wood and canvas planes, but I guess you can say the Air Force got its start right here in Oklahoma. Senator Chris Kidd was the legislator who, um, it was his first piece of legislation, Senate Bill 47, from the 2017 legislative session that put in state statute Oklahoma Aviation and Aerospace Day. So I'm so proud to see Duncan doing that as well. Also, uh, we talked about the ceremonial bill signing at Will Rogers. This is a photo from that day, and we could just not be more proud of Paula and Michelle and their work in our aero education program. And I cannot wait for 50 years from now when they talk about the time that Oklahoma had the era of the airplane. So thank you so much. I'd be happy to yield for questions. Thank you so much, Sandra. Do we have any questions or comments? If not, on to the next item, uh, item 10, our five-year airport construction program. Mr. Nick Young, please come forward. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, for this item, we are seeking the approval to add six hangar projects into our airport construction program as part of this year's hangar program. Uh, the first project here I have before you, and uh, just before I get started, I'll note that the prices that you see here, uh, preliminary estimated uh, OAC portion of the grant amounts here. So uh, the cost that you're seeing here is the commission portion of this, and I'll uh, allude to some of the early estimated costs of these projects as we go through. At Claremore Regional Airport, they are seeking grant for a 100 foot by 70 foot, 75 foot box hangar with the anticipation of uh, leasing this out to their air evac folks there, which would then free up uh, the prime FBO hangar space that they have right there on the flight line. Uh, total estimated project cost for this is about $1.1 $1 .1 to $1.2 million. So the, the commission's portion of that grant would be our maximum of 300,000 for that grant. At Clinton Regional Airport, they are pursuing a uh, 92 foot by 70 foot box hanger to replace the, the hanger that was unfortunately destroyed by a tornado. Uh, that wasn't the only hanger affected, but that is the one that they'd like to try to get uh, built back up first, uh, given uh, the insurance funds that they have, which will be part of their local match uh, for that. But unfortunately, there were some uh, there were under insurance issues there with that, that they're still working through. So they couldn't get from insurance the total replacement costs. So we're looking to help them with at least replacing this big uh, prime box hanger that, uh, that they lost in that storm. Uh, early estimated engineer's estimate on that is about $743,000. Uh, again, whenever we have those engineer's estimates, I try to keep those in there so that we have the most uh, accurate costs that we do, but we do recognize that will change over as we work through the design process on this. And so with that uh, engineer's estimate anticipated to be uh, just about $223,000 on the commission share of that grant for the Clinton Regional Airport. At Enid Woodring Regional Airport, uh, they're seeking a Grants for a 120 foot by 120 foot box hanger. Uh, they've still been uh, short on some storage space out there, so this will be meant to house transient and some midterm storage for the, the folks that utilize the airport out there. Uh, they have uh, a guy that wants to what, pursue a hawker to, to store in there, and then military often would use that whenever they have to overnight as well. That way we can get them out of the, out of the weather whenever they have uh, some folks that need to utilize that. Anticipated uh, total project amount for that hangar is about $1.8 million currently, and so that would be the maximum $300,000 grant from the, for the commission share of that project. At Purcell Municipal Airport, we're seeking a, they're seeking a four fi uh, 50 by 50 box hangers. Those are interconnected as, into one building, but that is primarily to get them enough space to keep uh, at, give them a little bit of a buffer zone for their 10-based aircraft that's necessary to get their non-primary entitlement funding. They are currently full on their hangars, but uh, have exactly 10 based aircraft. So uh, with that, if somebody loses their registration or has to re-up on that, or they buy a new plane and are trying to uh, move those around and get that in in the right amount of time, uh, they basically have just enough to continue with that MPE funding with FAA. So this would provide them a couple of extra hangars to ensure that they have the space for a full 10 based aircraft, even if they've got some rotation or bringing new businesses or, or tenants into the facility. So they do anticipate that'd be right around $1.1 million project as it stands today. Uh, so the total uh, commission share of that would be the $300,000 on the grant. At South Grand Lake Regional Airport, uh, they are seeking a grant to uh, build another 60 by 60 box hangar out there. Uh, demand at that airport has been exploding. We keep getting more and more pictures of both uh, local and transient jets on that ramp, uh, the little ramp that they do have there. So, uh, so uh, Brent has been sending us great pictures of all the great activity out there, and uh, they certainly fill these up as soon as they get them built. So they are seeking about a $425,000 total grant with the commission share of about $127,000 on that, primarily for some local um, uh, uh, leasing for, for local tenants, and then, of course, utilizing that whenever they have some of the free space for transient, uh, transient storage as well. And then on the last project here we're seeking to enter into the ACP is a 100 foot by 120 foot box hangar at Stillwater Regional Airport. Uh, they have had a problem for a long time in terms of uh, local storage of, of some of the, the aircraft that they don't have enough hangar space for, but the primary intention of this hangar will be to market and attract an aviation business to the facility. But because they have that local demand for a hu uh, hangar care, excuse me, a uh, community hangar, uh, they will certainly have that leased out in the interim while they go out for RFP and find the right business for their facility. And that will go very close to the old uh, OSU flights, uh, flight center that, uh, that will be demolished and they'll work to basically create um, 
a destination facility for local uh, aviation businesses that can set up there, uh, both in that big hangar and then and with the intention of setting up some smaller facilities in that area as well uh, that opens up that, that whole north side of the airport. Anticipated project uh, costs for that 100 by 120 foot box hangar is about 1.2 million. Uh, with uh, they, they are seeking the loan option on that for a full uh, $600,000 cap on our loan option there. Staff recommends approval of adding these to our airport construction program, and I certainly stand for any of your questions. Thank you, Nick. Uh, do we have any questions? I have one. Would it not make sense when we have this many projects and this much construction underway for us to bargain on behalf of some of these airports because the, the pricing I would imagine is probably all over the map to bargain on their behalf to get a cost down because I know that a, for example, a, a builder would offer a much better deal if you're buying eight 120 by 120s than if you're buying one here and one there and one here and one there that go onesie twosie to different builders. Have we looked at the possibility of doing something like that? Uh, basically a, a cumulative bargaining? Uh, I know that we tried that. It was some other projects like with the AWAS that we've done, but with these hangars, I don't know that we've, uh, we've looked at that just given the different uh, prices that we're getting from different bidders, as you said, uh, with the, the way that supplies are, uh, the supply chain is currently. And then uh, the other aspect of that would be the proximity of the airports, I think would be the, the biggest issue there. So then trucking transportation and transportation, right. Problematic. Right, but and so, right. For example, a 100 by 120 versus a 92 by 70, or a 120 by 120, I mean, you want as many square feet as you can possibly get. It's all this dollar per square foot that you can possibly get it. Certainly. And the, so it, I might defer to, to Director Artes. I think that uh, the, the main thing there is I know, particularly for the Claremore Regional Airport, part of that will be spec'd out for some office space, whereas some of these other box hangers would not. And so if they were all under the same design and specification, I think right. that that would be a good possibility. It was just for the purposes of what these communities are seeking for their purposes. Gotcha. That makes that a little bit more difficult to have just one set of plans and specs for all of these projects to try to, to, try to get that, that uh, economy of scale, as you mentioned. Uh, Director, anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, actually looked at that from the T-hanger perspective, because T-hangers are pretty much T hangers. You got T hanger here, you got T hanger there. They're all about the same size. And so that, I think we could look at maybe grouping T hanger projects together and get, you know, from a Rectitube or some of the other manufacturers, maybe get some economies of scale with the box hangers because they are so individualized and specific. You know, even though you may see a 100 by 100 box hanger, 100 by 100 may be, you know, a 22 foot tall door and the other may be only an 18 foot tall door that's where it's gonna become kind of specific on a individual architecturally designed project. Could be doable, yeah, but I think where we get our economies of scale better off would be on some of those T hangers. So this isn't the end of the hangar project list. This is just what we have to present to you today. And so as we look at some of those T hangers, there's a potential like Nick was saying, maybe we will look at bidding those out as a project like we did with the AWASH grouping um, a couple of months ago, because we could get some potential uh, prospects. But I, I would like to visit with some of the consultants and some of the architects just to get their theories and thoughts as to how much savings we're talking about and um, what the administrative process looks like on, on a hangar project like that. Okay. <coughs> Do we have any other questions or comments? Thank you very much, Nick. I appreciate you, sir. Um, do we have a motion to approve the amendment to the five-year ACP as it is, as presented? So moved. Second. Could you please call the roll? Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Chairman Hunter. Aye. The motion passes. The next order of business is item 12, Airport Construction Grant Program Consent Docket. Commissioners, remember that any or all of the items on this consent docket can be considered individually. I'm sorry. One more in 11. It's oh, just I'm an sorry. informational only. I apologize. Thank you. Of course. 
So at this item, this is uh, uh, just a quick amendment. It's an informational only item on a project that we're looking to try and close out for Max Westheimer Airport. Uh, during the course of this project, there was additional testing that was needed uh, as this is project was phase one of a taxiway reconstruction project out there. Um, this amendment is for a line item adjustment simply to balance out the additional co uh, costs on the additional testing and basically move um, some underruns in the construction and grant administration over to take care of the costs of those additional tests that were, had to be done as part of that project. Uh, this amendment will not increase the commission share of the project or the project cost. This is simply to take care of those additional tests that needed to be done to make sure that we had the, the end product that was called for in the plans and specs of that project. We're certainly happy to answer any questions anyone has. If we have none, now we move to the next order of business, item 12. Mr. Nagavi, your recognition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner. As you mentioned a little bit ago, uh, this is a, a constant docket, and you may request that any or all of these items be considered individually. Uh, the first project that we have is at Ardmore Municipal that they're going to construct a 120 by 120 box hanger. The total cost for this project is over $2.1 million. And it will be funded with the 600,000 of state loan funds and over $1.5 million of a sponsor matching fund. Uh, we have Mr. Dan and Bill here. They can talk a little bit about this project. Mr. Chairman, uh, commissioners, uh, thank you again for this opportunity to partner with the OAC. Uh, this project is something that uh, we are very excited about uh, in Ardmore as it will allow us to um, bring a flight training school uh, and to alleviate a backlog of uh, uh, general aviation needs in our community. And again, I uh, want to thank uh, staff, Grayson and, and team for all that they do to support our uh, efforts at the Ardmore uh, Municipal Airport. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bill. Next project at Inet Woodring Airport. Uh, if you look, yeah, the project is to reconstruct the runway 1331. It's the phase one. They're going to reconstruct the uh, runway, and they're going to mill and over overlay it with the uh, concrete. Uh, the total cost for this project is over $2.4 million. It's going to be funded with uh, two point, over $2.1 million with FAA. and the. Uh, sponsor matching and the state grant fund, each one of them going to be over 121000 uh, for this project. We have Mr. Kisten here. Good morning, commissioners. I appreciate your time. Uh, this is our crosswind runway project. Uh, it'll be in concrete, about a 3,150 foot runway, about 75 feet wi or wide. It was 108. We'll be narrowing it to a more standard uh, width. Uh, it, we'd also like to thank the Commission and also the Aeronautics uh, staff for their help with this project and uh, probably our local asphalt bid bidder for bidding asphalt so high that concrete is affordable. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? I'd be love to answer them. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> thank you, Kirsten. <laughs> Uh, the last project is at the Tulsa Riverside. Uh, the project is to uh, construct the, go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the project is to reconstruct the connector taxiway for primary runway 19 right, uh, one left. This is phase one, and they're going to reconstruct taxiway, uh, can I read? Uh, A5, uh, Limo, and uh, Kilo, and uh, taxiway A4. The project is, uh, the total cost for this project is over uh, $3.3 million. FAA has funded uh, almost uh, $3 million for this project. A state grant fund and a sponsor matching, uh, each one of them going to be over $166,000. This is all I have. I'm standing for any questions. You may have but a staff recommends approval. Thank you, Ben. Do we have any questions or comments on this one? Um, if not, do we have a motion to approve this consent document as presented? Move to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you very much. Can we call the roll, please? Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Chairman Hunter. Aye. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. The motion passes. Moving on to item 13, review of upcoming aviation and aerospace events. Sandra, Commissioners, you have survived yet another meeting of the Aeronautics Commission. In 1924, the E6B was invented. You guys know what that is? Actually. A hundred years later, I have now learned what the E6B is. I am in my, I am in my second week of ground school, and I want you to know it's no joke. It is no joke, but I'm having a good time, except for the E6B. <laughs> My dream is to fly and to not be afraid of it, and one day I will fly to one of these fly-ins, and I will land, I will be the pilot in command, and I will land on one of our 108 airports. This weekend, though, I will be driving to the Green Country AeroFest in Claremore on <coughs> September 10th. The El Reno fly-in is also this weekend. Our, our guy, Jace, back here, we're gonna break him in at the El Reno um, fly-in. So please take, take a young person, for those watching, take a young person, go to El Reno or drive up to Claremore. Please support these events. On September 29th, the FAA wants you to know, Commissioner Ritz, that they are having a virtual STEM symposium. And then uh, the Tulsa Air and Space Museum is having a biplane show October 1st. Uh, Thomas Galloway has expressed interest in going to that, and so we're excited about that. The Cushing Fly-In Fair is from October 7th through the 9th. And, uh, Director, do you know, is it like a two-day thing, or like Cushing? Yeah, yeah Cushing is a two-day two -day event. Usually it's a Friday, Saturday. Okay. The EAA chapters are going to gather together on October 15th, and they're going to view the film Inside the Sky. Uh, and I would invite the commissioners to come to that. It's going to be at Gary Manning's hangar at Twin Lakes. And uh, I, I, I want you to come. I think it'd be fun for us all to sit there and watch this together. They did not use the thin lens that I had requested. So there you go. Uh, Destinations, October 15th, is having their 13th annual Aviation Expo at Tulsa Riverside. And Tulsa International Air Challenge Day for Children and Youth with Special Needs is happening at Tulsa International on October 22nd. If you can uh, support that, Commissioner Rainey, I think, uh, Commissioner Potter, I think they're looking for some pilots and support there. And also, Women in Aviation Day is December 9th at Tulsa Riverside. We are about to really get to work on that. I know that uh, a lot of people in our community will want to partner with the Air Knox Commission and help us with that, because it's really important. We're going to have those girls uh, from those 57 schools hopefully there. A lot of them wrote that in their grant to attend, so we're gearing up for that. And I would be happy to yield for any questions. If there's anybody that wants to contact the Air Knox Commission, you can reach us at OAC at oac.ok.gov and send us your events. So thank you so much, commissioners. Hope you enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much, Sandra. Next up is item 14, concluding remarks regarding agenda items. I will entertain any remarks at this time. If there are none, on to item 15, announcement of next meeting. Our next meeting will be at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, October 12th, here on the first floor conference room in the Oklahoma Department of Transportation, 200 Northeast 21st Street in Oklahoma City. The next item, item 16, is there any new business to be brought before the commission? If not, I move to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Hearing none, we'll move on to, I'm sorry, item 17, adjournment. <laughs> adjournment. I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.